while riding the long ball to a 10 game win streak in the present. Is there an 11 game streak in their future? We'll find out next. in Houston, Texas. Root Sports brings you Houston Astros baseball tonight. The Astros open a three-game series with the Texas Rangers. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown along with Alan Ashby. Julia Morales joins us in just a few minutes. You know, over the years, we've seen this ridiculous headline so many times. Houston, we have a problem. Tonight, Houston has no problems in baseball, Ash. Not a whole lot going on. In fact, the Houston Astros have become the big story around Major League Baseball right now in a very good way. Well, today they got more honors. Dallas Keuchel, the American League Pitcher of the Month, and Jose Altuve, the co-player of the week. How could you, well, you? The only way you could go otherwise is just simply say Jose Altuve was the player of the week and player of the month for me. Uh, just phenomenal stuff from these guys. Dallas Keuchel could have been 5-0 and in the month. He is 3-0. and He's got some uh, ridiculous numbers that go along with him, including the ERA uh, down in the 070 range, the, the whip, the uh, hits allowed per inning. I mean, he just has some phenomenal numbers. And then there's Jose Altuve, who uh, I don't know that anybody approaches him right now on the offensive side of the game. Well, we can also talk about home runs because that's been a big part of the story for the Houston Astros. They have hit 40 so far in the first 25 games, Ash. Phenomenal stuff, and this is part of our Yellowwood. The Astros bring in the lumber as you get to look at some of the home run swings. And Evan Gaddis was a big part of that yesterday, but you've got the entire lineup. You don't have one of the leaders in the league in home runs right now. What you have is a lineup of guys slamming it, and as a group, they lead the league in home runs. And uh, the home runs yesterday, so big from Evan. Evan Gaddis, who hit two in the ball game, the second one, the difference, the margin in the victory for the Astros, and just a whole lot of fun is being had in that dugout right about now. Coming up, respect the streak. It's been a long time since the Astros have had this many reasons to celebrate, but the big question now is how to keep the good times rolling. Julia Morales talks with A.J. Hinch about the win streak when we return.
first 25 games. A.J. Hinch with me now. And A.J., the, you've been around baseball a long time, and that's such a great start to the season. Is there a point in the season where you feel like you can really tell what a club is or what, what the club's description is, I guess, at that point? Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard. I think, you know, early on we get a first impression. You, you go through our division, which is one of the things I'm the most proud of is we've played really well in our division. We've seen everybody uh, at least once. We've seen Seattle twice. This will be our second time seeing Texas. So uh, that feels good. As a manager, I don't think you ever feel like uh, you've arrived as a team. There's always things that you can do better. Um, but certainly, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have standings, you're gonna have games that are won and lost. Uh, you'd like to be at the top. We're proud to be at the top right now. But we also know we have a long road ahead. You have the AL Pitcher of the Month on the mound for you tonight. I know that gives this team confidence. What gives you confidence about Dallas? I mean, I love the way he competes. You know, this guy comes to work every day trying to do his best, um, and and usually does. You know, I mean, we're shocked when he gives up a hit or gives up a run and. Uh, he wants to finish games. He loves throwing complete games. Uh, he had nine scoreless in Oakland. He, he pitched eight innings in, in San Diego. So uh, he's our guy. We believe in him. We play good defense behind him. He, he always gives us a chance. Thanks for the time, AJ. All right, thank you. All right, that's the Astros skipper. Astros trying to make it 11 in a row when they host the Texas Rangers. First pitch with Dallas Keuchel, the AL Pitcher of the Month on the mound. Next. Closing out this homestand with a three-game set against their in-state rivals, the Texas Rangers. They have Dallas Keuchel on the hill for the Astros tonight, who was on the mound when this winning streak started. Ten straight games for the Houston Astros, and he has been great in both starts. They've actually gone through this rotation twice. So here we go, Keuchel on the mound tonight. But let's look back. April 24th was when this streak began. It was in Oakland. The Astros coming off a day off in Oakland. And Keuchel was incredible. He faced Scott Kazmir, but he went nine shutout innings, allowing just two hits that night. Did have two walks, but no win for the lefty because neither team could score until extras. And here's Marwin Gonzalez, who started to heat up. He was coming off the bench at that time, came up with a big two-out, two-run double you see there. That was in the 10th. Marwin was heating up, like I said, but the A's did come back to tie it up. So the Astros had to come up with some offense again, and unlikely heroes for this team. Another guy coming off the bench, Robbie Grossman, with a two-run single there. The Astros actually scored five runs in the 10th and 11th inning. This sparked the team by battling, finding ways to win, guys, and they have not lost since. I'll send it up to you for more. Quite a run, Julia. Thank you for that. Ten straight wins, 14 wins in the last... 15 games. It's the ninth time in club history. The Astros have had at least a 10 game winning streak. The club record, a 12 game streak, set in 04. 
And as a result, they are playing 720 baseball with 18 wins and seven losses, the best percentage in the American League. Now, where do they go from here? Well, they have a seven game lead. And they haven't had a seven game lead through the third of May since the 2001 season. No, no team has done that uh, since the Seattle Mariners in 01. And they wound up with 116 wins that year. For the Astros, uh, this kind of a seven game lead has not belonged to them since the end of the 98 season when that club finished 102 and 60. Here's the starting lineup now for the Texas Rangers. They are managed by Jeff Bannister, who grew up in this area. And Dallas Keiko will face this lineup. Shinsu Chu, the leadoff man and right fielder. Elvis Andrews at shortstop. Prince Fielder, the DH. Adrian Beltre at third base. Kyle Blanks at first base. Adam Rosales at second base. Robinson Chirino is the catcher. Leones Martin in center field. Jake Smolinski, the left fielder. On the mound for the Astros tonight, it's the ace, the left-hander Dallas Keuchel, who has just been dominating everybody to the tune of a 3-0 mark, 073 the ERA. We could go on and on with the numbers against the Rangers. Ten career starts. He's just two and three and a 395 ERA, so he's got some work to do there. His first pitch is ball one to Chu. Marty Foster's the home plate umpire. Chu with a 141 average has two homers, nine runs batted in. He cracks on a high drive to left center field. A long run for Marisnik. He's going to try to play it off the wall. It gets off his glove, and Chu is in with a leadoff double on a well hit ball to left center. That's his fifth double of the year, and that's a resounding start for the Rangers, who have been having problems scoring runs. You know, Dallas's last time out, he went eight innings of three hit ball, allowing a run and seeing his ERA go up. But you can see that pitch kind of in a happy hitting zone. And that. Uh, uh, the area hitters like it out over the plate a little bit and driven by Shinsu Chu. But two of the first three hitters in San Diego in that eight inning outing had base hits against Dallas before he tightened it up. Elvis Andrews comes up now. 224, one homer, six runs batted in. Chris Carter shortened up at first. Andrews takes. And there's ball one. Andrews three for 15 against the Astros in Arlington, Texas, with two runs batted in as Houston took. Two of three in that series. He had an eight game hitting streak, which ended yesterday. Dallas gets a strike. And that's what he does so well, among other things. Ash is work inside and out. You'll find both corners, as you say, Brownie. He uh, not only works down consistently, but he'll come up when he intends to. Just a real quality pitcher. He has figured things out here in the last couple of years. That's a strike and it's one and two and pitching in does a couple things now Andrews saying something to Foster about that call makes it more difficult for Andrews to hit the ball to the right side to advance the runner. And it also establishes that he will come in. Yeah, I think that's the huge point right there is make it tough to move the runner up. While obviously getting your out. Rangers are 12th in runs scored in the American League. Overall, they've won eight and lost 16. They're nine and a half games behind the Astros. He fouls that one back. Brownie, that last start that I uh, referenced against the Padres for Dallas, he had more balls hit in the air than he had ground balls in that game. That's the only time so far this year he had 11 ground balls, 12 balls hit in the air, and uh, and and that's an odd game for Dallas. He is two and three lifetime against the Rangers with a 3.95 ERA. That's a foul ball to keep the count at two and two. The battle for the boot has gone the Rangers way for the last several years. The Astros getting that leg up when they took two of three in Arlington. They will meet 19 times this year. The Astros won the boot last year for the first time since 06. They won the season series last year from the Rangers 11 to 8. That's tap foul third base side. And it's a big night for Jeff Bannister returning home. He was born in Oklahoma as was A.J. Hinch. They were there to hand their lineup cards to the umpiring crew around home plate before the game tonight. But Jeff Bannister as the old saying goes got to Texas as soon as he could. He went to Lamarck High School and then Lee College in Baytown and the University of Houston. Three balls, two strikes. 
Dallas keeps moving that slider in on the right hand hitter and exactly what you're saying has to be the reason trying to if you get contact and you're the Rangers the ball is a ground ball on the left side. Struck him out. He gave him a different look that time for out number one after coming in 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 with the slider he comes up and gets the strikeout. I don't know if this was intentional. Clearly they were trying to go away and that change up as it turns out left up. You would never really intend to go up there but sometimes you'll get the whiff. Prince Fielder is a threat this year hitting 358 with two homers 11 runs batted in after undergoing surgery last season. Bouncer Altuve to his right. Retiring fielder two outs two to third base. Defensively behind Dallas Keuchel and he'll make him work. Ronnie Grossman Jake Marisnik and George Springer in the outfield left to right. Left side of the infield Luis Valbuena and Marwin Gonzalez on the right it's Jose Altuve and Chris Carter and behind the plate Hank Conger gets the start. A 36 year old Adrian Beltre beautiful night in downtown Houston. We have had a string of outstanding days for weather. Beltre at 216 with two homers has four runs batted in very slow start for Adrian. Taking all the way he sees ball one. Now Beltre though had been rounding into form recently he had a seven game hitting streak which ended yesterday. Hitting 298 his last dozen games. Do not buy into the 216 batting average. Keiko lowers that average just a smidge. Lead off double, no runs. One hit, one man stranded at third, no score. Jose Altuve leads it off playing second base for this club with a 10 game winning streak. It's Luis Valbuena playing third base batting third the right fielder George Springer D.H. Evan Gaddis first baseman Chris Carter shortstop Marwin Gonzalez center fielder Jake Marisny catcher Hank Conger left fielder Robbie Grossman. On the mound for the Texas Rangers left hander Ross Detweiler fifth start of the year He's had a rough go to 0 and 3 with an 866 ERA. Doesn't strike out a lot of folks. He walks too many for his skipper. And lifetime against the Astros, he has fared well. 1 0 in four games and 287 the ERA. Jose Altuve smoothing an area in the batter's box before he gets it started for Houston. Leading the American League in hits with 39. And he goes for the first pitch and fouls it. His 11 game hitting streak was ended yesterday, but. He wound up being happy with the Astros 7 to 6 win. He's been walked intentionally the last couple of games drawing more and more respect because of the fact that he's driven in 19 runs that leads the club. And he's really hitting in clutch situations. One ball and one strike to count. 361 average ranking high in the American League. 
That one floats outside. That makes it a two ball one strike count. You gave us the numbers on Detweiler. With that 8.66 ERA certainly a lot of room for improvement there. He's had extra time since his last start. He's given up six homers in 17 and two thirds innings. It's a shot foul. And he's been beat around Brownie by right hand hitters and they have hit all six of the home runs. 394 the batting average by the right handers and to top that off Jose Altuve loves beating up lefties. Ted Weiler has been working in the bullpen during the extra five days rest since his last start Tuesday against Seattle. Almost hit him with that one. And Altuve has worked to count full. Jose has nine walks this season. He has been quite a catalyst with a 407 on base average, eighth best in the AL. And he draws another one. Lead off walk and a pitch that bounces. And it's Valbuena following. Defensively for the Texas Rangers tonight, Jake Smolinski, Leonis Martin, and Shinsu Chu. The international outfield on the left side of the infield, Adrian Beltre and Elvis Andrews. On the right, Adam Rosales and Kyle Blanks. And behind the plate, guy who throws very well, Robinson Chirinos. Valbuena is tied for the club lead in homers with six. Lefty on lefty here. There's a chance he could be bunting. Beltre is off the line even with a bag at third. But Valbuena can hit lefties pretty well. There's strike one. And with that kind of pop with the six homers and four doubles, 471 slugging percentage, a bunt might be wasting that power here. George Springer on deck. Well, the Astros have certainly been letting it rip. They're fourth in the league in runs with 125. They're averaging five runs per game now for the season. And during their 10 game win streak, they're averaging 7.6 runs per game. And what they are not, Brownie, is a ball club that you look back and say, boy, they've executed bunts to move runners. That's not who the Astros are right now. No. No balls, two strikes. The Rangers. With that 8 and 16 start, our ninth in ERA, 4.26. Deadweiler has generally been pretty good in his four starts. In the first two innings, a 2.25 ERA. After that, 13.97. That one bounces. Altuve takes off, and he will make it. The ball was blocked out in front of the plate, and Altuve. Advances on the wild pitch by Deadweiler, his first of the year. You're going to need to see this to confirm my suspicions. This is not Altuve running on the play. This is Altuve seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hands and seeing that that ball was going to be in the dirt and started his break. Uh, he, he sees everything going on in the field. See, he's just immediately in motion from first base. That was quick. He's got great reads. One and two now after the wild pitch. Yeah, he was ready to go even before that ball bounced. He must have picked it up out of the hand of Deadweiler and must have seen that that was going to happen. You know, some base runners truly look back toward the hitter. Some look toward the pitcher to see where that pitch is likely to wind up. Two and two. And I think that would probably be the really good base runner, the runner, the guy that's going to take advantage of situations like we just saw. The Astros are 14 and 5 against the teams in the American League West. They have a seven game lead on their nearest contenders right now in the early going. It's the best ever record for a Houston team through 25 games. A year ago, they had an 8 and 17 record through 25. In the dirt. Several pitches have been in the dirt. It's three and two. It's the Angels 11 and 14 in second, slightly ahead of the Athletics, then the Mariners and the Rangers. Yeah, and that combination of Angels, Athletics, and Mariners, the team that a lot of people were looking at to, to maybe be the front runners in this division. Well, Buenos a strikeout victim. And so already the Astros have picked up a, a sizable margin 
between themselves and those clubs. George Springer. As you see the strikeout will be the batter. Just a fastball. That rotation coming from the side a bit and down under the knees ultimately getting the strikeout. Springer has three homers in his last nine games. He's been on base in each of his last 15. He has started every game for the Astros this year. 204 batting average, four homers. He's driven in a dozen. But in the last 15 games, he has a 377 on base average and a 554 slugging percentage for a 930 OPS in those 15. Big cut there, and it's strike one. George had a couple of really good at bats yesterday hitting the ball sharply on the first base side one going down the line for extra bases the other a line drive right at the first baseman and so I commented to him today batting practice time no hits down the first baseline and he immediately said or up the middle. <laughs> oh and two. Yeah he's been hitting a tough lock recently no doubt. When the Astros score first in a game their record. Is 13 and 0 this season. That's the pre grip, by the way, to the changeup. That makes it much easier for a pitcher to change to fastball if need be or the curveball. One ball, two strikes. Pitchers are always concerned if they have to grip from the basic fastball grip and turn it into a changeup that they'll tip something off. Evan Gaddis on deck. Up and in. Two and two, Deadweiler trying to harness things. He has been all over the place so far. The Astros now have risen to third place in the majors in the power rankings by Sports Illustrated of all 30 major league clubs. Springer looks at it. Now it's a full count, the third full count in a row to open the game. Close pitch, but a good layoff by George. You got the 2 2 count. You've got to protect, and you're able to lay off that pitch that's probably three inches or so off the corner. George is second in the league and walks with 17. He backs away. First of a three game series tomorrow night at Scott Feldman and former Astro Wandy Rodriguez at 7 10. Wednesday night, Samuel Duduno and Colby Lewis at 7 10. Springer takes and that's a walk. Number 18 for Springer. Runners at first and second and Evan Gaddis follows. Yeah I, I like you Brownie I, I like that Springer's now picking up the walks and clearly he takes a pitch out of the strike zone nonetheless close. I just hope in the process he doesn't lose the aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. It can happen. Well you got some kind of speed on the bases now. Evan Gaddis ripped two more long balls yesterday. He's been on a home run jag. Six home runs to tie for the club lead now. Four of those coming in the last three games. He's driven in 16 runs in his last six starts. Not exactly who a pitcher would choose to face in an early situation that could produce a run. Broken bat, and that one rolls foul up the first baseline. Part of the bat is up the third baseline. AJ Hinch picked one of Evans' bats out of the bat rack and handed it to Craig Biggio before the game today. Some players in the past have seen this happen and uh, seen Super Bowls bouncing all over the field. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Hit right on the end of it. Yeah. Get those cupped. And bats, and they're very susceptible to this happening. Gaddis, the last nine games, producing very monstrous numbers. 871 slugging. Altuve takes off, and Springer behind him. Throw goes to third. Double steal for the Astros. That's number 10 for both players. Keep in mind, Torino's the catcher, throws very well. And I was a bit surprised that Torino's didn't go to second base right here. George Springer had a delayed jump trailing. You see, George was at least a step behind. 
But even a good throw right there, Altuve was going to make a, an out call really tough. And what the Astros also are doing in the process is they're creating some mistakes. Errors have been made on these throws. Runs have scored. Fly ball right field. Chu with a good arm makes the catch. Here's Altuve coming to the plate. Throw goes toward third. 1-0 Houston. Gaddis with RBI number 18. How many people on the Rangers bench right now are saying, didn't he have a shot at home? Right. Couldn't he have made this play close? But apparently Chu didn't see it that way. No. Nope. And speed and ability to draw a walk and just make contact on need right here has provided the Astros an early lead. Well, this is good stuff, Ronnie. That is resourceful, getting that ball in the air. And now Chris Carter bats with a runner in second. Well, it is good stuff because Gaddis has been hitting the long ball, but that was not necessary to get that run home. Carter at 159 has three homers, eight runs batted in. Chris also went deep in yesterday's game, a two run shot off lefty Jay Happ. With Happ going one. yesterday for Seattle and Deadweiler tonight, Wandy Rodriguez tomorrow, the Astros are facing three lefties in a row. Marwin Gonzalez is on deck. Carter takes that pitch. And Chris now with a 2 1 count. We'll look it over carefully from Deadweiler. Deadweiler has been getting hurt on his fastball with a 613 slugging percentage off that pitch. 2 2. Batting average against Deadweiler's fastball, 363 for the season. Rangers have lost all four of his starts. Carter's down on strikes. That's number two. The Astros hustle their way to a run on no hits thanks to Gaddis lifting the ball to right for a sack fly. One nothing Houston after one. This is how you play. And after talking to these guys in the clubhouse after some of these wins, you can tell they're really enjoying, enjoying this stretch, but they feel like they're getting rewarded for playing the right way. And this is the goal. This was the goal when they started, and this is how they wanted to start their season. But the season's long, and they'll tell you that the rest of the league will try to adjust to the style of play that they're, that they're playing with right now. But that just means that they have their opponents where they want them. Right, guys? It's look good. Certainly. Thanks, Julia. Kyle Blanks leads it off, takes strike one from Dallas Keuchel in the second inning, one nothing Houston. Blanks at 3.33 with two homers, has driven in four, playing first base tonight. Mitch Moreland is coming back from an injury, and he's on the disabled list. 
That's in for a strike. No balls, two strikes to the big slugger Blanks, who played for Oakland last year. He's listed at 6'6 six, six and 270. Came up with San Diego. Strike three call, and Keiko carves him up for his second punch out of the night. Welcome to the big leagues of paint right here. And you see the four seam fastball grip, and he just goes to spot. Can you paint the edge any better? I'm not sure what level of school that is, but there was a form of school being taught. In school, all right. Adam Rosales takes strike one. Rosales at second base tonight. Carries a 167 average, one homer, three runs batted in. There are seven players uh, on the Rangers club who are on the interstate right now. In terms of batting averages uh, that start with 100, so not sure if there was a separate bus for them to get here or not, <laughs> but you know there's some talk about that in the clubhouse. Oh, it hurts. You know, you don't like at any point looking up at the board and seeing the weak batting average, but you start getting into the month of May. And you you see the numbers start to settle somewhere, and it, it's it's a real challenge. Rosales strikes out. That's three for Keuchel. You know, you guys have been talking about the number ten, Ash, you and Julia, and it keeps cropping up tonight. Ten straight Houston wins. Here's Keuchel with a strikeout, and you talked about the fact that Keuchel has gone to the mound the last ten times with the Astros winning. And he and Colin McHugh have both done that. So this would be the Astros 11 straight win in a start made by Dallas if they get it and that would be a club record. You know. You probably I don't know if if agents take a number like that to arbitration if that ever comes up. But that would be a badge of honor to say that when I pitched our team won mm -hmm. time and time again. I think that's a big one for a starting pitcher. Robinson Chirinos has a one ball one strike count. You talked about his arm which is strong Chirinos from Venezuela. Last year had 306 at bats for the Rangers. Started 88 times last year. Started the bat there and the appeal did not go his way. Mike Machlinski rang it up the Astros way one and two now. Change up gets that bat started. Couldn't hold it back and that gets out through the plate. Is strike three. Keichel fans the side and the reigning American League pitcher of the month as a 10 pitch second inning, whiffing three to maintain a one to nothing advantage. at southwest.com. 
and by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. one nothing Astros on a beautiful night in downtown Houston. Marwin Gonzalez will lead it off here in the home second inning. Gonzalez settling in at shortstop after the unfortunate loss of Jed Lowry left a vacancy at that position. Jonathan VR has played there as well. Marwin at 286 has one homer. He's driven in eight. Ball one to him. Well, he was hitting second in yesterday's lineup. Now in the number six spot against this lefty, Detweiler. Line shot left field goes foul. I like the effort by the ball boy. Yep. In an instant realized this line drive might overmatch some fans, so try to get in there and make the play. Yeah. He's not protecting quite, his people. Ash. Not quite ready for the big leagues yet, but pr pretty good work. Good mm -hmm. thinking out the play. There's a guardian there. Marwin takes and it's a two ball one strike count. The Astros are six and zero oh since Jed Lowry went down with thumb surgery. Two balls two strikes for Deadweiler. It's good changeup. Deadweiler was a first round draft choice. By Washington at 07 he was the sixth player drafted three picks before Madison Bumgarner was taken that year. Elvis Andrews kind of had to snatch that one. Looked like he was fooled by something there at the last instant. One out. Sometimes that fooled look is a knuckleball being hit at a guy. When a hitter just squares it up, that ball will come like a knuckleball and start moving all over the place. He's saying, I didn't call that. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Throw what I call. <laughs> Jake Marisnik. 382, three homers, 12 runs batted in, nine steals, defensive plays. Just a terrific start for Jake Marisnik, who's on an 11 game hitting streak, a career high for Jake. He's hit 432 during those 11 games. Dave Hudgens is the hitting coach. He said Marisnik uh, has made some changes since last year, and he had a tendency to drift a little bit. He's staying back better with his weight this year. Just has a solid approach, and he is such an athlete. That's what people have been remarking. A lot of people really don't maybe know how tall he is. He's in the 6'3, 6'4 area. Yeah, he's a big guy, and he's he's surprising in that regard. You meet him and you think, wow, I've, I've watched you move around on the field. I didn't realize you were that big. And it's it's kind of the back and forth of how you do what you do. Mm -hmm. He's a big guy who's fast. And has power. He has a 632 slugging percentage. He's only one and a half plate appearances short of being listed among the league leaders in batting average. Chop to the left side. Andrews. Two outs. And for those who are interested, that's 3.1 plate appearances for every game the player's team has played. So he would need 77.5 plate appearances to be listed, and he has 76 coming into this game. Really close to being listed there in the league leaders. But of course, if it was the end of the season, you could add in hitless at bats and still win a batting title in that way. Good point. Switch hitting Hank Conger at 263. Hit his first major league homer batting right-handed a few days ago. And he said he got the baseball on that one. There's ball one. He's been catching Dallas Keiko the last few starts. One ball, one strike. He let that bat fly that time. Conger, Saturday night against Seattle, had a homer and two singles. The game started by Taiwan Walker. He homered off the lefty reliever Olsen in that game. In for a strike, and it's one and two. Astros have not swept three series in a row since 04. Well, they've done it this year already. Sweeping Oakland and San Diego, and then a four game set from Seattle. 
Beautiful view from there. Robbie Grossman's on deck. On a breaking pitch, Deadweiler gets a punch out. That's number three for him. It's one nothing Houston after two. It's all about the ground balls. And Dallas Keuchel is the king of them all, y'all, in terms of getting the ground balls. One after another, he's had as few as 10 ground ball outs this year and as many as 16 already. And Dallas was the king a year ago, so he just picks it up where he left off. He's a great fielding pitcher on top of that. He'll get a lot of these plays himself. Just a terrific ground ball inducer, and it's uh, gone a long way to help him in terms of the success now he's putting together as a major league pitcher. Look at some of the uh, numbers on the course of the year. 3.7 ratio leads the American League. 67 ground ball outs already. And he throws strike one to Leonis Martin, a 223 hitter with one homer, eight runs batted in. Albuena on the grass. Martin can bunt. It's one and one. And Martin can steal. He has six and eight tries. Works quickly. Gets a strike one and two. That's what he does really well. With everything else we talked about, he'll change speeds. That changeup has become a masterful pitch. Inside it comes two and two. His whip walks and hits per innings pitched is 0 0.73 coming into this game. The batting average against him, 130. by Martin and he is strikeout victim number five that's four in a row change the speech change the directions find the area up and down that you want to work from you can see fastball grip and that's the two seamer and you get more of that sinking action out of that grip Jake Smolenski is the number nine hitter and left fielder Josh Hamilton is playing games in Arizona now. There is strike one to Smolinski, 133, one homer, four runs batted in. Very little production from the Rangers left fielders, and Hamilton may be able to rejoin this club as an outfielder later this month. That's the latest report. No balls, two strikes. After the trade from the Angels. Here's a guess. Who was the pitcher who had a lower ERA? Than Keuchel through his first five starts of a season this year. Yeah. No, in club history. Oh, in Astros club history. Yeah, that's well. I, I know the answer, and so it's not fair to, to run it out there. But if you're at home trying to come up with that answer, get really creative. Well, who would you guess if you didn't know? If I didn't know. That's a changeup grip. 
I might have to go with J.R. Richard. Yeah, you can see the, the ball coming out of the thing, the last three fingers of the left hand, and hitters just reach for that pitch. They can't get there. When they do get to it, they roll over and hit the ground ball. Right-handers on the left-hand side, so uh, it's just a huge part of the arsenal. Five strikeouts in a row and six for the game. Here's Chu batting. Chu takes ball one. Well, you might think Richard or perhaps Nolan Ryan yep. or Mike Scott, who had a lower ERA. Well, it, the previous record was 0 0.75. Keiko lowered that to 0 0.73, but the previous uh, lowest ERA for the first five starts of the season, none of those guys. Randy Neiman. 0.75 1979 don't know if Randy's still a pitching coach. I, I believe it was last year. I saw Randy as a major league pitching coach could have yeah. been the year before it and so been, yeah. uh, maybe he has simply plied some of the, the the things he had learned to be able to turn that in early in his career. Brent Strom another one of those crafty lefties when he was a younger man. Wore in a younger man's shoes in those days. He's still crafty. One and one. He of all people would appreciate what Dallas has been doing, though. What do you say to a Dallas Keuchel? I think the only thing meaningful you can do is try to point out if, if it looks like Dallas is getting away from something that keeps him successful. He has high standards. He's been unhappy with his 11 walks in 37 innings coming into this game. But did not walk anybody in that last start. Eight innings, three hits, one run, and a win at San Diego. He gets a punch out. That is six in a row for Dallas Keuchel. Seven in the game, and the Astros lead it one to nothing without getting a hit yet. Root for the Astros and win great prizes from the Astros and Root Sports. Post your pictures with Orbit on social media, then tag the Astros and your cable or satellite provider and use the hashtag WhereIsOrbit. Head to Astros.com slash WhereIsOrbit for more info. Where is Orbit, guys? Well, he was having a bite to eat up here in the uh, dining room before the game. Did you get a chance to chat with him, Julia? No. Did what does Orbit eat? He, um, he eats meteoric uh, rock. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Grossman, the batter. 139 his batting average. And there's strike one to the switch hitting outfielder at 139 with one homer, five runs batted in. And moon pies, we're told, for orbit. Robbie's only had one time in the batter's box against this lefty Detwilder, and he drew a walk. One and one. Based on the girlish figure, I, I probably would go with the latter. Two and one. Orbit uh, was uh, really very coy when asked uh, how he won that race yesterday. The finish line around uh, 
home plate area during that game. He overtook three other contestants with a furious burst at the end, and he would not reveal his strategy. No? No. Well, I thought it was brilliant the way they timed that one. Bouncer goes foul. Three and two to Robbie. He's made ten starts this season, and the Astros uh, sometimes play Colby Rasmus against the lefty. Sometimes not. I thought he won with one giant leap for mascot kind. <laughs> yeah. Bouncer shortstop. Andrews takes it over first. One down. Tonight's league leaders are brought to you by your local Honda dealer, Jose Altuve, doing his usual and his not so usual. Look at the RBI of the hits. 39 in the first month of the year, multi hit games. 13 steals. Yeah, he led the league a year ago. RBIs already. There's the not so usual. Can he keep up that kind of a pace? Because the Astros have thrived on those ribbies. He might not be able to because he might be walked intentionally more often. That was the trend of the previous series in Lloyd McClendon of Seattle. Walking him intentionally twice in the last two games. There's ball one. But Altuve has been leading the club in hitting with men in scoring positions. So that's legitimate. Well, and, and until somebody starts driving in runs from behind him, you got to walk him. That's a three iron. Whoa, Martin did not make the catch. Here's Altuve sprinting into second base, and he's in with a double. He just whacked that low pitch, kept it on a low line. Now, Martin slow to get up as Altuve has the first Houston hit. That's his eighth double of the year. Martin hurting the left wrist area. Well, these Texas Rangers are shorthanded right now, and they're a ball club that's really struggling. They would be sorely hurt to lose this center fielder. But look at Jose. Takes a pitch down. You know, we're all told you're supposed to hit pitches in the strike zone. That's just not the story for Jose Altuve. I'm sorry. He hits everything, and when he sees the ball well, he hits it well. You can see the ball was in and then out of the glove of Leonis Martin and then the wrist whatever happened there not good he rolled over on it and bent back he's getting some attention now in left center field that's the difficulty isn't it for an outfielder on that type of a play avoiding that injury so is anybody ever going to tell Jose Altuve wait for your pitch I do everything that I can handle is my pitch just great form there. Solid back leg through the baseball. You take that on a three iron off the practice tee, wouldn't you? Mm. Well, you know, you want to hit it to straightaway center field in that game, you're implying. Uh, in this game, the <laughs> gaps are really nice. Hit it in the trees if you can. Well, it was a dog leg left. See, that that's why you are such a fine <laughs> player, because you're thinking ahead all the time. Right. I just Continue to marvel on how he hits pitches everywhere and hard. No, honestly, if you pitch him in, he takes you down the left field line. If you pitch him away, he goes down the right side. And anything in between, he finds the gaps and over the head of center fielders. And Martin's going to try to gut it out, but this doesn't look good for the moment. How high do you think that pitch was off the ground when Altuve hit it? Well, we could see on the on the strike zone that it was well below the bottom of the knees. So I would say somewhere between ankle and bottom of the knees, maybe midway. And I just don't think you can say to Jose, hey, you know, be careful about swinging at bad pitches because you don't want to mess up what he does. And this is what he does. Mm. And last year I, I heard all this stuff about, you know, you, you got to make sure you're hitting this pitch. But if you. Well, Buena to left center. That's caught by Spolinski. If you find a guy that gets it figured out and sees the ball well and does the right things with his body, he can handle it. He is truly amazing that hand eye coordination. Waiting now for Springer. Springer drew a walk on a 3 2 count in the first, and then he and Altuve executed a double steal. The Astros are leading the majors in steals. They now have 33 and in homers. Been a lethal combination for them.
Springer takes a look at it and it's ball one. They also lead the American League in total bases right now. And they're second in drawing walks. Fly ball off the end of the bat to right field. Chu coming in. In the third, no runs a hit. A runner stranded, one nothing Houston. Nineteen eighty six with a special ticket promotion that offers limited lower level and two hundred level seats for nineteen eighty six for Monday through Thursday games in the month of May. For more information, visit Astros.com slash tickets or call one eight seven seven nine Astros. Jeff Bannister makes his return to Houston. Having grown up in this area, he said he would anticipate this night just like opening day in Texas, his first game as a major league manager and there's a hit to right field as we get underway in the fourth inning by his number two hitter Elvis Andrews hit number two for the Rangers. Nine straight had been set down by Keichel after the leadoff double by Chu. Bannister graduated from Lamarck High School in 82. He played baseball football and golf. He was a quarterback and linebacker in football. And he has battled bone cancer and osteomyelitis. Throughout his career he had one. Major League at bat with Pittsburgh in 91 and got a hit. Prince Fielder moves back. There's ball one to Fielder who grounded to second in the first inning. I hope he was known as the golfing linebacker. <laughs> yeah. What a nice guy though. And after years as the bench coach for Pittsburgh manager Clint Hurdle, he got the opportunity to take over the Texas Rangers this year. Big thrill for him. Grounded and Altuve will get it to Marwin Gonzalez on over to Chris Carter for a double play. 21st double play for the Astros this year. That 4-6-3 is always the, the tough double play in the infield, barring the 3-6-3 or 1, whatever. But when you have to turn it this way, you rely on somebody maybe not running all that well. You have that with Fielder, but you also have Altuve and Marwin teaming up again beautifully to make it. That really helps to clean up the bases for Adrian Beltre now. He's always a threat to go deep. There's strike one to Beltre. He grounded back to Keichel in the first inning. Keichel is leading all major league pitchers in assists in the early going as he tries to defend his gold glove. And with. He's got 397 homers, Ash. Oh, he's a great player. Terrific third baseman to go with it. I was going to say, uh, with all the, the strikeouts for Keichel messing up his ground ball ratio that we've been talking about, the double play provides a couple. Mm -hmm. Diving Carter now 
Keiko will cover on the throw from Altuve, which leads him perfectly well coordinated on the right side of the infield for out number three. One nothing Houston after three and a half. Gavis had quite a day of it yesterday with two homers. Gaddis drove in four runs in that game. The Astros won it seven to six. Lining balls into those left field seats where the Crawford boxes are. Ash. Couldn't tell if that second of the Gaddis home runs was going to get up enough to get out of here, but boy, that was a pleasant sight when it got to the seats. So he's hit five home runs of his six here at Minute Maid Park. Taking aim on the Crawford boxes in four of those five. The other one a massive shot to left center field. Yeah, those four in the Crawford boxes have not been bombs per se, but hit very well. And that line drive type dinger. It's a nice ratio, five and 50 at bats at home. This fly ball goes to center field. Martin over toward right center a few steps. That's one out for Deadweiler. Deadweiler keeping this game close. He went five and a third innings in his last start, a loss to Seattle April 28th, giving up two runs. And has regrouped a little bit after walking two in the first inning. He had three straight 3 2 counts to the first three batters in the game. But after the Gaddis sack fly has calmed down, now it's Carter. Carter struck out on a 2 2 offering in the first. Ball one to him. Deadweiler pitched for Washington last year. Two and three was his record with an ERA 4.00. He's from St. Louis, Missouri, and attended Missouri State. Carter swings at it. Two and one to Chris. That Weiler has 20 major league wins and 35 losses. Listed at 6-5. Beltre. Two outs. Both these lefties very efficient so far. And now it's Marwin Gonzalez batting. Marwin lined to short in the second inning. This is the 40th anniversary of Bob Watson scoring the one millionth run in Major League Baseball. 40 years ago today, May 4th, 1975, the Bull scored that one millionth run. The Astros were in San Francisco and they won it eight to six. That was the first game of a doubleheader. He was honored tonight before the game with a shadow box on the field. With a home plate in that shadow box, there's ball one. They had a counter on all the scoreboards of all the major league games underway at that time, and the counter had reached 999, 999. 
Line shot into left field. Marlon this time finds an opening. Twice he's hit the ball on the button and he's one for two tonight. So we'll look back at one of our favorite guys down through the years, Bob Watson. Not only a very fine hitter, but he was a major contributor in the Astros front office as general manager and then went on to a World Series championship as the Yankees GM. I had the privilege and pleasure of playing with Bob when I first came to Houston and he was just a true hitter. Big guy that didn't run all that well, so he had to earn his hits. But he didn't get fooled often, had plenty of power. Jake Marisnik looks at ball one. Ground ball to shortstop in the second inning, retired Marisnik. Jake had quite a series at Texas. Six for 11 with a homer and four runs batted in on the Astros' first road trip. Broken bat up the middle, stabbed by Rosales. He gets the force play on Gonzalez. No runs a hit, one man left. One nothing Houston through four. The event features a pregame wine tasting and a wine stopper giveaway to the first 500 fans at the event. For tickets, visit astros.com slash scrape escape or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Dallas Keiko back to work here who was just named AL Pitcher of the Month. That news broke as we were having our media availability with A.J. Hinch and A.J. saying, well, the recognition is just going to come for this guy. It's just going to be more and more as, as, as his career goes on. Excuse me. He said, I don't think that he's going to change his approach. I'm just really glad to have him on my team and guys that got you know the clubhouse not surprised at all by uh, the honors that Dallas Keuchel gets they love when this guy's on the mound just a tremendous start to the season one nothing lead for Dallas Kyle Blanks goes for the changeup and it's strike one Blanks struck out looking in the second Dallas has been asked recently about that ERA 0 0.73 through his first five starts he's really downplaying that That's rolled off his leg and, uh, Rose, and Blanks goes down on that one. It's an 0 2 count. And Dallas has, has been saying something to the effect of, well, it's, it's five games. You know, if it's the end of the season and we're talking about this, it's a little bit different. Some guys get labeled as being really tough. If you can hang in and just stay there and be ready to get in the box and hit after that, you're pretty tough. Disparity club. Breaking ball in the dirt makes it one and two. Dallas has that late movement. And so often the ball is just moving late and downward. That's what helps with all the ground balls. You know, for me, I, I watch some guys that I, I see, at least to me, have bigger sinkers than Dallas Keiko. But Dallas's is subtle and in a great location most of the time, and it serves him so well. Yeah, there's two seams and just trying to get it to sink. Ground ball. And third, it's Valbuena. On over to Carter, one out. 
Dallas has made two previous starts at home this season. He has not allowed a run at home so far through 17 innings this year. Adam Rosales will follow. Rosales struck out in the second inning when Keiko struck out the side. In fact, he whiffed six in a row in the second and third innings. Rangers averaging 3.7 runs this year. Gonzalez takes a look at it. And their club again, as with last year, has been racked by injuries. One ball, one strike. And they have you Darvish on the disabled list after surgery. Derek Holland, same situation. Matt Harrison, Dean Perez. So some top-notch pitching talent is unavailable to the Rangers this season. They've blown some big leads. Bouncer off Keiko's glove. That slows it down. Altuve barehanding and out at first. What an amazing play by Altuve. How did he get that ball to first so quickly? That's really close at first base. And as Brownie says there, this is spectacular stuff. Pure do or die. Keiko gets his glove on it. That might have cost him until Altuve gets to it. Was, was there an out to be called there? Well, Rosales is not leaving first base, so he wants a challenge here from Jeff Bannister. And we are going to get a replay review. Yeah, he just never left first base after that. He was convinced he was safe. It appeared to the naked eye that there would be no chance to get him, but Altuve made it close. Well, let's see what it looks like full speed. Wow. Yeah, I, I think this is going to get reversed. It would appear. Ooh, ooh, I don't know. No. Let's let's rethink my comment. No. And and wow. the, the standard is when does the ball hit the back of the glove? So is it in the back of the glove there? The foot's not quite to the base yet. So let's assume it's not. Is that reversible? It has to be convincing evidence. We're going to play a little Exmo for you. Yeah, he's out. Good call. I'll tell you what. That's surprising, isn't it? That is one exceptional call that, based on watching the, the full speed there, I might have gone the other way with. No doubt. No doubt. Mike Machlinski on the call. And those are difficult because of the deflection, changing the direction of the baseball, and then Altuve reacts so quickly. So is the call it is upheld that is a perfect time wow. to use replay review how would you like to be Mike Munchlinski right now and and say now do you want to review me again ever you can't get closer than that and be right ball has hit the back of the glove two outs just an amazing effort by Altuve mm. with his quickness now it's Chirinos who struck out looking earlier. And ball one. When you think about reaction time. It's coming off the pitcher's glove. The infielder doesn't know, you know, until a split second before where the ball will be headed on that deflection. One ball, one strike. Chop slowly to shortstop for Marwin Gonzalez. That is a quick fifth inning. One nothing Houston.
by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Brought to you by Big Time Bats, Craig Biggio, Louisville Slugger, Hall of Fame Bat. Now available. Call Big Time Bats at 866-490-BATS or see it at BigTimeBats.com. We have a new center fielder, Delino DeShields, has checked in for the injured Leonis Martin. Who was hurt on that fly ball to left center field, hit by Altuve in the third inning. DeShields, the former Astro farmhand, taking over in center. In a one to nothing game with Hank Conger, the batter. Strike one for Detweiler. Conger struck out in the second inning. Fly ball hits for the right fielder. Chu. One down. This moment in history is brought to you by MD Anderson. Craig Vigio collected hit number 2000 on May 4th, 2001. It came off Javier Vasquez in Montreal. Wade Miller picked up the win on his way to Pitcher of the Month honors. Well, we forget about Wade Miller sometimes. Infield hits, those are a part of what those guys do. Biz wants the baseball. He got a lot of those. He was out here tonight before the game. I saw you chatting it up with him. Yeah, we had a nice talk. Richard Justice is here. There's ball one. Robbie Grossman, he grounded out. There's a line shot into right field. Oh, Robbie gets something started with one out here. Hit number three for the Astros. Sometimes a guy needs a hit. Robbie is kind of uh, desperately in that, that column. And so that's really nice to see a pretty job of going with the baseball to right field. Right shoulder. Watch how he stays down through the baseball. Head right on it. And yeah, that's real good work by Robbie. He's aboard for Altuve. Altuve has walked and he's doubled tonight. Rosales positioned up the middle for Jose. And the throw goes over. Blue Jays lead the Yankees three to one there in the top of the ninth already in Toronto. R.A. Dickey started for Toronto. Yankees have sure been blazing a nice trail. And the throw goes over to first. When you look at the Astros and the AL West, it's looking like a, a division without a good team other than Houston right now. But that's through 25 games or so. Yeah, the Angels have been struggling and that's surprised me. Strike. The Angels are the club that had the best record in Major League Baseball in the regular season last year. Well. You can only imagine that they will be pointing for the Astros this coming weekend. Ground ball up the middle. Andrews with a shovel. Rosales turns. That is a spectacular 6 4 3 double play. Elvis Andrews leaves his feet, gets it to Rosales. A quick spin move. And here it is as the Rangers really go to work with the gloves. You won't see it done any better than this, and I thought this was going to be a base hit. Uh, they turn it.
schooling as he's facing Robinson Chirinos in the second inning. He gets a strike early. That's where they'll try to be in the strike zone and then try to go to painting on the edges. The changeup induces the swing to get it to two strikes and then take that. He goes hard back on the inside edge toward the knees. Picks up the strikeout. He was on a punch out roll at that point. Leads it one nothing and here's Delino to Shields leading it off. She was out in front of a changeup. There's strike one of the former Astros first round draft choice to line to Shields. That for me is what. Really good major league pitchers can do it's not. Go after the strike zone with fastball every time and pump one right through there. It's maybe a changeup on the first pitch of the inning perfectly executed. That one a little bit inside apparently two balls and a strike. Shields from Gaston, Georgia. He was the eighth player drafted in the 2010 draft, taken in the Rule 5 draft by Texas. Up the right field line, that's slicing away from Springer. That goes into the corner, and it's a fair ball. The Shields, who can really scoop, gets into second base, and he's on with a leadoff double. That has to feel good for the Shields coming back against his club that he grew up with a little bit and now getting a chance to play in the big leagues. I'm not sure this pitch was where Dallas Keuchel wanted it. He was trying to go down and away, left it kind of up, and I think he would deem that to be one of his mistakes on the evening. Shields has been a big-time base stealer in the minor leagues. He had more than a hundred steals in one minor league season. Jake Smolinski is the batter. He struck out in the third. Rangers opened the game with a double by Chu, and he was stranded at third base. That's hit number three for them. But at third base side, and it trickles foul. Luis Valbuena was got in a tough spot right there. You could see the bunt being shown early by Smolensky. No doubt about it, I'm bunny. But Valbuena, if he leaves that positioning at third, leaves the bag wide open for a good base dealer to be able to take it. Uh, Luis had to just hold his ground and accept the medicine if that bunt was fair. Mm -hmm. Marwin Gonzalez is trying to keep the base runner close at second base. Wanted again foul. 0 oh 2 to Smolinski, the number nine hitter. Dallas Keuchel has 12 straight quality starts since August 15th last year. That's the longest quality start streak by an Astro since Wandy Rodriguez had 13 in a row in 2010. And Wandy goes tomorrow night for Texas here against Scott Feldman. So a former Astro pitching against a former Ranger tomorrow night. Fly ball right field corner again for Springer. He makes the trip and slides oh! and into foul territory. Wow, he caught it. George Springer with an amazing catch. Fantastic play and the Shields tags and goes to third on the Springer sliding play. If George Springer were in Oakland where there are huge foul territories, I would suggest he never goes down. But with that wall so close to the line, he goes down to slow himself down and then has to adjust and make the catch. This guy is so spectacular. I'm not sure fans really realize what a what a gifted defensive player George Springer is. Oh, that is some kind of play. Phenomenal play, and then he threw it from his backside. The Shields advanced, and now the infield is in for Chu with one out at a runner at third. Chu with a double and a strikeout. And breaking pitch, strike one to Chu. And the Astros outfielders have really been making the highlight plays this year. In the dirt for a ball. One and one. Find myself wondering if the Rangers, as poorly as they've been playing, as tough as the wins have been to come by, would consider the squeeze right here in the middle of the game. That's a thought. Two balls and a strike. Elvis Andrus on deck.
Do you like the squeeze with a left hand hitter at the plate? Doesn't bother me because if, if executed properly, it's too late by the time he turns for the pitcher to adjust anyway. Bouncer first, Carter checks the runner, goes to first base, two outs. A true squeeze, that hitter's not going to show until the pitcher lands with the front foot, and it's too late for an adjustment to be made. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, that's, that's the point when the runner from third base really wants to take off. You, you try to delay it as much as possible where, where you don't have any impact on where the pitch winds up. DeShields at third. Two outs. Elvis Andrews, one for two. He opened the fourth inning with a single to right field. 278 career hitter against the Astros. Michael pounds it in for strike one. How about when you can, as a pitcher, have the infield drawn in in that kind of scenario and get your ground ball and keep it right there, one nothing Houston. One and one. Michael trying to deliver a demoralizing blow to the Rangers here after the leadoff double and then advancing to Shields to third on out number one by keeping them off the board. Line shot caught by Valbuena, and he does keep them off the board in the sixth. No runs a hit, a man left. What a phenomenal play by George Springer, sliding into foul ground, into the barrier, and then he gets it back in. Keep the Astros in front, one to nothing. A fan of the game. I have Ethan. He's with his Bel Air baseball team. Ethan tells me he's hitting 507 with his baseball team, a senior on the team. Is that really true? That's true. 507, that seems unreal. And you said about 80 at bats, too, which is pretty impressive. Okay, you've got your team here. What similarities does your team have with the Houston Astros? Well, I mean, we're all like the Astros, you know, they're real good. And we're, and we're pretty good. Bel Air baseball. But, um, you know, and like player wise, we got. Jose Altuve sitting right over there. And then this is LJ Hose right here. And then there's Chris Carter. Oh, thanks for being our progressive fan. You guys have fun and go into the playoffs. Good luck in the playoffs, guys. Proud of you. All right, go Bel Air. Thanks, Julia. No balls, two strikes. Luis Valbuena with the Astros leading 1 0. Leads off the home sixth inning. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a line out to left. One and two from Ross Deadweiler. Deadweiler, before his last start, had eight days rest to work out some mechanical problems in the bullpen. Looks as if he may have gotten himself untracked. Two balls, two strikes. Bel Air and Tomball, just a couple of the areas of 
real hotbeds of fine baseball in Houston. They sure are. That one almost got Valbuena. And it's called a foul tip strikeout. And he thought it hit him in the arm, but it was called by the home plate umpire. A ball that hit the bat and glanced into the catcher's mitt by Marty Foster and a strikeout. Here could be part of the problem. If the bat goes through the strike zone, if on a check swing you determined that was a swing, and I certainly would, I don't care where it hits you, it's still a swing. And it would not be a hit batter. So uh, the argument is pretty moot for me. Did that clip him around yeah, the see left now, elbow? Now we've got the third base umpire saying the swing was taken. And so the, the play's over at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah, no challenge because that ruling was made. By the third base umpire, Mark Wagner. And strikeout number four for Detweiler. And George Springer bats. Springer has a walk and a stolen base, also a fly ball to right. Each club with three hits, no errors, and a very tight game. 1 0. Nationals lead the Marlins 6 4. They're in the bottom of the eighth inning in Washington. Jordan Zimmerman has been on the mound. It's one and one. And Desmond hit his second home run. The only run here was accounted for by a first inning sack fly by Evan Gaddis. Deadweiler walked two before the Gaddis fly ball, which came after a double steal by Altuve and Springer. Here at Minute Maid Park, where the Astros are eight and five at home this season. Astros only the seventh team to win 18 or more of their first 25 games after losing 90 the year before. Foul back. Mm, what a good swing, and that's one that when you start getting it right, you can't miss that pitch. Gaddis on deck. Charged by Andrews. Quickly out of the glove. Out at first. Follow the Astros all season with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment, at any moment with. In game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. What about the uh, TV side of things? Huh? Yeah. Evan Gaddis, the only RBI in this game, pumps one to left center field on a line. That's in, and it goes all the way to the bullpen wall. Gaddis into second with double number four of the season for Evan. Been knocking line drive after line drive in the last several games. Gets an off speed pitch. Pretty good spot to be able to handle it. He can take a pitch on the outside corner and pull it. And he just perfectly splits the gap. Evan Gaddis is becoming more and more a big part of the offense. It's not exactly George Springer going down the line, who, by the way, really made that last play close at first base. But Evan Gaddis. He needs to be a big part of things in the heart. He's aboard for Chris Carter with two outs. Hit number four for Houston. Carter has struck out and grounded out. Gaddis has been hitting off speed pitches hard. Back one to Carter. Leonis Martin left the game with a left wrist sprain. X rays are being taken. Rangers into that same kind of a scenario they had last year with player after player going down for long periods of time with injuries. No balls, two strikes to Carter. Another factor hurting the Rangers right now. They haven't pitched well, but to have the guy that I consider their best player, Adrian Beltre, struggling with the bat is hurting their offense a lot.
upstairs to Carter one and two with Marwin Gonzalez on deck. The Rangers won 91 games in 2013 dropping off to 67 last year. Takes ball two. Torino's a good worker behind the plate. He's got some nice fundamentals on blocking pitches. Astros have won seven of their last nine here in this ballpark against Texas. The previous 23 games here, they were three and 20 against the Rangers. Fly ball goes foul. Rays lead the Red Sox at Boston. It's five to one in the top of the seventh inning there. And a lot of people are starting to look at the AL West standings and wonder what these clubs are going to do when they start <laughs> playing more games outside the division. Flared back foul and out of play again. Play roughly half their games within the division during a 162 game season. The Astros will come back from Anaheim where they'll be over the weekend. They'll meet the San Francisco Giants next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, in interleague play here. Carter's down on strikes. That's number five for Deadwater. The Astros strand Gaddis at second after he doubles. And it's still one to nothing. Houston through six. in center field Ash. yeah I'm not sure you can tell one from the other we've got Lance Berkman and Jake Marisnik in the battle off for greatest play on Towles Hill can you tell which one was Lance and which was Marisnik or Jake Marisnik just able with an angle on that play to uh, to make a beautiful play I have to hand it to Lance Berkman though for a ball directly over his head and uh, it wasn't the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but what a job by Lance. Final result, out. There's a foul ball, strike one. Fielder the batter. Prince is 0 for 2. He's hit the ball on the ground both times. Marisnik stationed a little bit toward left center field. The shift is on. But Fielder has been beating that shift by going through the left side of the infield with some of his hits. We saw that in Arlington. One ball, one strike. He's the type of hitter who will do that. And with his 419 on base percentage, it's working for him. Now he's a better hitter for a, a big power hitter than you might typically see. He is. He can hit the ball all over the park. The outfielders are really spread out, the fielder. He 
shoots a line drive toward the left field corner. That drops in and rolls to the wall. Robbie Grossman picks it up. Fielder into second base with a leadoff double. That's the third leadoff double for the Rangers tonight. You know, I could make the argument in the limited action that we have seen the Texas Rangers that when you have the shift on with him and he starts shooting toward left field, he might become a better hitter. He's going to hit a lower percentage of home runs, but that leadoff double is almost disabling. That back foot just go flying out. Beautiful work. For a man with 290 career homers, he does know how to hit for average. Now, Beltre the batter. Beltre has grounded out twice. This roller goes to shortstop, charged by Marwin Gonzalez. And that's a big out, number one. The fielder unable to advance on the Beltre ground out. Well, it's enormous. And for Marwin Gonzalez, we haven't seen a spectacular play yet. We don't need to. He's been making all the routine plays, and that's what Jed Lowry was doing. And when you've got Keichel on the hill, there's the slider. You see that spiral kind of spin on it? He gets the rollover and a big out on what should be a big hitter for the Rangers. Kyle Blanks with strike one on a changeup is 0 for 2. The Rangers 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position tonight. 2-10 for the season with runners in scoring position. It's one ball, one strike. Salas is on deck. Lashed and caught Balbuena at third base for out number two. And the Rangers have hit some line drives at people tonight. Yeah, that can feel like the streak can stay alive because when you're on a streak as a team, you're going to catch some breaks. Line drives are not necessarily hit right at people. Rosales struck out and then he hit a ground ball up the middle deflected by Keiko and went up in the air and then Altuve charged barehanded and got it quickly to first base to nip Rosales by the smallest of margins on a play that was reviewed. And strike one. Rangers have not had back to back wins this season yet. And the Astros have not lost. In the last 10 games. He went 0-2. You know, among the, the many things that I love about watching Dallas Keuchel pitch is he doesn't have to think about changing anything with men on base. He doesn't suddenly have to speed up his delivery, turn into the slide step. He does it all the time, so he's always ready for it. People don't run on him, and that's a, that's a big hurt on the offensive side of the game against him. One ball, two strikes. Dallas Keiko on opening day against Cleveland won two to nothing with seven shutout innings. And he won four to nothing over the Angels here April 18th with six shutout innings. He had nine shutout innings and a no decision at Oakland April 24th. Three of his five starts scoreless ball. Two and two. In the game at Texas, he got a no decision. The Astros won it in the 14th. He gave up two runs in seven innings. And last time, one run in eight innings. Just a magnificent season at the beginning for Dallas Keuchel. He wants it extended. In fact, Keuchel. When he gave up the two runs, it was in the seventh inning at Texas in that game, April 12th. And the Astros had a 4 to 2 lead when he came out of the game. So there was one win that got away, even though the Astros won it later. Roller to Dallas. He gets it on to Carter. And once again, a leadoff double for the third time in this game does not materialize for the Rangers. Keiko keeps the Astros in front, one to nothing.
bottom half inning, and Jack in the Box has taken us inside the box score. We're looking at Marisnik and his balanced approach here. Looking at the spray chart, he's using the whole field, going to the right side a lot. Uh, makes sense when you look at his hot and cold zones there. Liking those pitches away. And hitting coach Dave Hudgens told me today that he's done a nice job staying on the ball this year. They really worked in spring training on keeping his hips closed. But that approach could also give you some trouble against lefties when you're a righty, right, yeah, that's intriguing. Uh, hips closed. I, I think of Wade Boggs. I think of Ichiro as big examples of guys who didn't open their front hip early. And uh, it can really lead to keeping the hands back. And that sets a guy up to be able to stay in position to hit in or out. So um, I love that notion with Jake Marisnik. He's on deck as Marwin Gonzalez gets it started in the home seventh. Gonzalez one for two. One nothing Astros. Each club with four hits. No errors. And a breaking pitch from Deadweiler is good for strike one. You notice how Julia always finds out the inside really good stuff going on? She does. She knows people. She knows audio, I know that. Yeah. One ball and one strike. At least four Braves won at the end of eight in Atlanta. Rain started for Philadelphia went six in for a strike one and two in the Astros with this one to nothing lead on a sacrifice fly in the first inning they relied on the work of Dallas Keuchel now they'd like to give him a little more working room two and two Detweiler has certainly stood up to the challenge after allowing the Gattis sack fly in the first inning walking a couple and then there was a double steal to get those runners in scoring position. That was a borderline sack fly too. I thought Shin Su Chu should have been coming to the plate on the play. It's an excellent play. Yeah, an excellent idea to, to bring that up because he threw toward third and did not contest Altuve scoring the run. Was that speed just simply causing a fear factor for the defense and they backed away? Maybe. 2 pitch coming to Marwin next. And he expands the zone and strikes out. That's number six for Detweiler. Risnick to follow. Jake 0 for 2. Jake is grounded out. In the second inning into shortstop and then bounced into a fielder's choice play in the fourth to second. Beltre even with a bag at third. Conger on deck. And it's strike one. Come on, Jake Battle, Jake, come on. Marisnik was born in Tampa, Florida, but went to high school in Riverside, California. And tight one and one. That was a 12 player trade that sent him from Toronto to Miami after the 2012 season. He had been a Toronto third round pick in 09. Reaches for that one, and it's one ball, two strikes to Jake. Detweiler's very nicely changing speeds. He's gotten into a good rhythm. He's at 94 pitches. 54 have been strikes. Bounce foul. Michaels at 82 pitches. I find myself wondering if Dent Weiler, while sitting on the bench, while his Ranger teammates are batting, finds himself watching Dallas Keuchel and, oh, that's how he does it. Okay, well, maybe I can implement that a bit. Foul back. At the beginning of the season, the Astros were winning primarily with well pitched games. And they've been in this stretch during the 10 game streak in which they have really been bashing the ball. Tonight, scoring has been very difficult for them. They have two wins via shutout this season. Keichel involved in both of those 2 0 and 4 0, both here.
Foul back. But they've been resourceful. Whatever it takes, they provided. Keone Kella is warming up now in the Ranger bullpen. And they have won the one run games. They're six and one in games decided by a single run. Off the plate, two and two to Marisnik. When do you pull the trigger? When do you lay off that breaking ball? Starts well away and ultimately stays out there, although made to look good by Torinos. And the third, Beltre. Two outs. Every Wednesday night home game is $1 hot dog Wednesday. The next chance for dollar dogs is this Wednesday when the Astros take on the Rangers. For more information, visit Astros.com slash dollar dogs, or you can call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Mustard is free. We'll see you in two nights for that one. Samuel Deduno and Colby Lewis. Hank Conger bats. Ball one. He's a... Specially priced seats of $19.86 for certain seats in the field level and club level sections. In effect for this entire series. It's one and one. Conger with a strikeout and a fly ball to right. Dodgers and Brewers are tied. Well, now it's 4 3 Milwaukee. They've rallied 4 3 in the bottom of the eighth to lead the Dodgers. And the debut of skipper Craig Council. And all he had to do. Was go up against Clayton Kershaw tonight in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Well, they got three off Kershaw. I've always wanted to be a big league manager, just not tonight. <laughs> Taking over for Ron Renneke. The Brewers are 7 18. Conger takes it for ball two. Two balls and a strike. Only three and one now. Kershaw giving up three and seven in the third. Kyle Loesch pitched against him. Jock Peterson hit his seventh. Of the season for the Dodgers. There's a kid that has really had an impact for his club. He sure has. AJ Hinch managing a club with 14 wins in its last 15 games. Arms folded with another close one. Conger takes and his strike three call. Seventh strikeout for Detweiler. And it's one nothing Astros through seven. Vote for your favorite Astros today by visiting Astros.com slash vote. Ash, up to you. Thanks, Julia. And now time for our pitch by pitch brought to you by Steel Dealers. Dallas Keuchel is the story. Seems like every time he goes to the mound, it hasn't mattered tonight if he's left it up or turned it down and away, changed speeds. Look at that change up as it comes off those last fingers, hitters way out in front. It is another Dallas Keuchel night. One that has seen him yield some early doubles, but not bend, and uh, he just keeps on shutting them down. 
One nothing Keiko and the Astros leading it Robinson Chirinos is up in the eighth he's 0 for 2. Showing bunt. And it's ball one with Keller warming up in the bullpen the paid attendance tonight 17,597. The shields on deck. Two and oh Smolensky do up third in the inning for the Rangers. Ramirez crashed into the wall at Fenway and had to leave with a shoulder injury, left shoulder. Now there goes foul. It's a two ball, one strike count. I don't think the, the Red Sox lineup is, is ready to abandon Hanley Ramirez right about now. He's been really big. He has. In for a strike. 2 2 now for Keichel. Just when you think you got it figured out. Okay, he spots the fastball, then he comes with the changeup, and you start settling in on one of those that bend that, that breaking ball in there. Close one there. Wow. Three and two now. Then he turns to uh, the paint shop. Is that on the plate or not? Good call. Struck him out with a change. Yeah, I'm not sure you're in a good spot going to three and two on a on Dallas Keuchel anyway. I don't know if there are many guys like him, but he can turn to any pitch. There's that grip that he relies on so much with that changeup. Eighth punch out for Keuchel. Now to Shields. He doubled a right in the sixth. Strike one to the Shields. Michael strikeout high in a game is nine. He's done that twice. Last time in September of 2013 against the Angels. In for a strike, 0 and 2. All four of the Rangers' hits tonight have come leading off innings. Three have been doubles. One ball, two strikes. Two runners stranded at third base. One at second. The other. Hit was erased on a double play ball. Yeah, when you can give up three leadoff doubles in a ball game and not have a run on the board, something's going right for you. Yeah. Two and two. And he's creating a lot of that on, on the right side, no doubt. But it doesn't hurt to have a little magic working for you either. Well, this team has been associated with that during this 10 game winning streak, at least some of the time. I would contest look at any team on a 10 game or better winning streak and they've had some things go their way. Yes sir. Three and two and then there's the old saying you make your own breaks right. That's what they say. You know you can hit line drive after line drive for outs and you would say I don't know if I buy into that but over 162 probably so. That's a walk to the shields and he's a base dealer. First walk of the night for Keiko. That was really close too. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night's pitching matchup is presented by Chevron. Care for your car. It is Wandy Rodriguez and Scott Feldman. So the former left-hander for the Astros goes to the mound. 0-1 against Scott Feldman. 2-2 two two, both with ERAs in that four area. And so the Astros will see if they can deal with that left arm of Wandy. The Shields is two for two in steals. Smolinski the batter. He's 0 for two. Double play depth for Marwin Gonzalez and Jose Altuve with one out in the inning. It would be very surprising if the Shields took off. But watching that first pitch as we look at ball four enabling the Shields to take his base. But that was further inside than I might have guessed to begin with. But for DeShields taking a good lead and a one way lead where he's leaning towards second. I just don't think he can go on that Keichel delivery. Pitching the dirt throw behind him and now Carter on into second base, not in time. O'Conger throwing behind the runner, but DeShields just took off for second on the pitch in the dirt and he makes it there. Now it looks good to throw behind a runner when he has gone off the back. Watch what DeShields does. Pitch in the dirt, he bounces, but 
on a guy like the Shields, that speedy guy that likes to steal bags, he just makes the quick read to head towards second base. And even though Carter delayed in get, getting rid of the baseball, I'm not sure that he would have had much of a shot, even if he had reacted appropriately. He turns like he's got a tag at the bag. It is ruled a wild pitch rather than a stolen base. And it counts 2 and 0 oh now on Smolinski. Foul ball 2 and 1. There was only one stolen base with Keiko on the mound all last season in four tries. But the Shields made it to second with one out. You know, I think I would uh, rule that previous play advance on a fielder's choice. Because the wild pitch only took the runner off the bag. He right. stopped. Chu is on deck. Loop into shallow center field. The Shields will try to score. There's a throw to the plate by Marisnik. It's offline. The game tied at one. Throw into second. Not in time. And the Rangers get the Shields home on a Smolinski single. Wow, does that hurt? Man, that's got to be like a dagger for Dallas Keiko. A one out walk. And then a potential pickoff down to first base leads to this. That pitch was not where Dallas wanted it. By the way, nice effort by Rusnik. See him charge the ball very well, get the throw down. You really can't do it better than that from center field, but when it's all said and done, not only a run, but moving up 90 feet for the Rangers. Brent Strom is coming out, the pitching coach. There's some stirring in the bullpen for the Astros. 98 pitches have been thrown by Keichel, 63 of them strikes. Shinsu Chu will be the batter. Chu opened the game with a double. He's one for three. The Rangers now tie it as they break through in the eighth inning. A walk, a wild pitch, and Smolinski's hit. That's his fifth RBI of the year. Astros will have Grossman, Altuve, Valbuena do up in the last of the year. Pat Neshek warming up for Houston. The shift is on, putting Marlon Gonzalez over on the first base side of second. Pulling it on the ground to Carter. Carter taking it to first base. Two outs, the runner advancing to third, Smolinski. Now Andrews. Elvis one for three. Single to right in the fourth. He lined to third in the sixth. And Conger reminding about a bunt possibility. Fielder is on deck. Five hits for the Rangers, four for the Astros now. Inside for ball one. In, and it's even at one and one. Two balls and a strike. There have been some wild ones between these two clubs down over the years. This one very tight from the outset. Now three balls and a strike. Good looking pitch right there. Change up perfectly spotted down and away. Let's see if this finds the strike zone. You know, Kate Conger's been dropping to a knee and to two knees and uh, different things while receiving some pitches. And I'm not sure it's helping. 3 2 now as Andrews swung over that pitch.
Manzer standing here on his 3-2 count with two outs and a runner at third and a tie game. Hoping Keichel is at 104 pitches can keep it tied with Fielder on deck. Outside for a walk and now Fielder comes up. Second walk for Keichel both in this inning. Fielders one for three, a double to left in the seventh. I'm not sure you want to shift the infield around on him right now, but the Astros are going to. A base hit is a run. And Fielder has shown strong ability to be able to take advantage. Just a good hitter. That's the way the infielders move. That's ball one to Fielder. Two ground outs for Fielder before the line drive double into the left field corner. He went. One and one. Started the bat that time and checked it. 2 1 for Prince. Prince hit 50 homers in 07. Check swing roller goes foul. He was trying to back out of there and it's 2 and 2 now. Really into it tonight. Pitch just stays up and in. Fielder got a kind of movement early there. I think he was guessing and got completely blown up. Popped up. Valbuena over into foul ground to end it in the Ranger eight. Texas ties it with a run on one hit, leaving two. It's one one. Thanks, Julia. We look back at the way that top of the eight finished with Fielder at the plate. And Keichel had runners at the corners. Rangers have tied the game. Here's what happened. Watch this slider come out of the hand of Dallas Keichel. Here's that spiral. See the, the big uh, button on the backside. And pretty good job of trying to protect there by Prince Fielder, but Dallas gets the, the huge out. 
Now the Rangers go to the bullpen for Keone Kellup facing Robbie Grossman is one for two. Kellup gets it up into the mid 90s. There is ball one on his first pitch after Detweiler went seven innings allowing four hits one run walking two, fanning seven. Kellup was born in Los Angeles. And as a rookie he's moved into this bullpen into some very important assignments at age 22 now. Last year he was at double A Frisco and class A Myrtle Beach. He's pitched twice effectively against the Astros in both of his outings this year. In for a strike to make it 2 1. Kelly got his first major league win Saturday against Oakland with a scoreless 10th inning and they got a walk off victory. In tight to Grossman. Robbie's worked the count to 3 1 now. Bobby was in that pirate organization when Jeff Bannister was a pirate coach. He pulls one on the ground and there it is at first base. Blanks with a play one out. One down to keep that one from getting through into right field. Kellogg one and one is ERA 2.25. In 12 innings. He leaves their club in appearances with 13. This is number 14. Jose Altuve has been on base twice. He has a walk, a double, and he's bounced into a double play. Luis Valbuena is on deck. Beltre close to the bag at third base. Strike to Altuve. You noticed what we have not seen from the Astros offense tonight. What? The big pair, the, the long ball, oh, that. and the stolen base. Yeah. Well, we had a double. Well, we steal. did have a double steal earlier. Yeah. I'll go back to my nap. Okay. One one. Well, the home run has been such an important part of their offense. Rangers saw it in Texas. The Astros hit six in a three game series. Now go foul. Mm. Upper deck foul. Oh, it's just about the feeling really prophetic right there. Yeah. Uh, Altuve got a pitch on that inner portion, and oh, we talked about it. He can turn that around with the best of them. We hit a three run bomb Saturday night here. Upstairs for a ball. It's two and two. The cautious taking the pitch borderline up these days. It is in the strike zone, and umpires have begun to realize it. Altuve grounds that one foul. That's Gary Pettis. That knack of when you don't have your best swing being able to hit a foul ball. I I don't know what creates that, but I sure enjoy watching it with this guy. Mm -hmm. Beltre Blanks and Rosales do up in the Texas ninth inning. Altuve pops it up. Rosales underneath. Two outs for Kella. And now Valbuena bats. Jose got a pitch to handle. He just wasn't quick enough on that. Maybe off the inside corner. Pure four seam fastball. And that's where guys just try to crank it up. Valbuena's 0 for 3 tonight. Two strikeouts and a line out to left field. He went. And there's strike one to Luis, who. Is tied for the club home run lead and tied for fifth in the American League. He leads all American League third baseman currently in home runs. Come on, Come on, Come on. One and one. He became the first Astros third sacker to record five homers in the month of April since Morgan Ensberg hit nine in April of 06. Ensberg wound up with 23 that year. 
two balls and a strike. Phillies beat the Braves tonight, five to two in Atlanta. Aaron Harang winning it over Alex Wood. Smash foul. Two and two. The Brewers rallied to beat the Dodgers four to three in the debut of the new skipper, Greg Council. Three in the eighth inning. Still a two balls, two strike count with George Springer on deck, hoping to get a chance to swing the bat here in the eighth inning. Now full count. Center fielder, the Shields moving over. And the Astros are retired in order in the eighth inning. We move to the ninth. It's tied 1-1. Got to be about Dallas Keuchel, right? Finally, he yields a run in the eighth inning to tie the game at one, but eight strikeouts on the night, a couple of walks. He'll be upset about that. He did allow five hits. That's not many for many guys. For Dallas Keuchel, a little higher than what he's been yielding, but another outstanding pitcher performance by Dallas Keuchel. He has been masterful. 13th straight quality start for Dallas Keuchel. He's out of the game after 110 pitches, 69 were strikes. His updated ERA is 0 0.80. Chad Qualls comes in, 0 and 1 with a 2.89 ERA, a couple of saves, and six straight scoreless appearances for Chad, who is really looking good in his career against the Rangers, facing Adrian Beltre. Strike one to Beltre. Beltre 0 for 3. Eight innings, five hits, one run allowed by Keichel. Two walks, eight strikeouts. Now Keichel has made six starts. He is not allowed a run in three of those. He's given up one run in two and two runs in the other. That's how you get to an ERA of 0 0.80 for 45 innings of work. That was some kind of good slider right there to Beltre. Nothing. To show for it for Qualls. You know, two starts back, Dallas Keuchel went into that game in San Diego with an 062 ERA. 
That's out to left center field. A long run here for Grossman. That will be one hopping the bullpen wall. Picked up on the warning track by Marisnik. And that's another leadoff double for the Rangers. Beltre's fourth. That's the fourth leadoff double they've had tonight. At some point they're going to take advantage, and that's what you hate to to hear right about now. But that hanging breaking ball got tattooed a bit. You can see the slider grip grabbing a big scene. That that's really a well done slider rotation where the back of the ball has that little tiny dot. But Adrian Beltre has caught a few of these in his day. Anyway, I was about to say of Dallas Keuchel. Eight innings in San Diego, one run. Eight innings tonight, one run. And that ERA has ballooned from 062 to 080. <laughs> Kyle Blanks, the batter. And there's strike one with Neftali Feliz, the closer for the Rangers, warming up. Did not see any indication from Kyle Blanks that he was trying to hit one to the right side there. Balls pitched a scoreless inning Friday night in Seattle. A oh, ball and it's 0 and 2. Good game tonight. Very well pitched. Six hits for the Rangers, four for the Astros. No errors in the game. Rubned Odor is in the on deck circle. Los Alas do up next, but the left handed hitting Odor is prepared to bat for him. In the dirt, Conger blocks it one and two. And Qualls has put together that string of six straight scoreless outings. Hunger got down a little bit late with the knees, but when it's all said and done, nice job. Ideally, you'd like to get the knees to the ground, glove on the ground, right in between your, your legs, and, and then let that chest protector go to work. Punched out of play. Still one and two as Blanks was reaching for that pitch. Balls pitched twice in the three game series in Texas didn't give up a run on either occasion but a couple of runners he inherited scored in the game April 12th and that tied the game when he had uh, some control issues he hit a batter and had a couple of walks and a sack fly in there as well. Foul ball off Conger. One of a three game series and a string of games for the Astros against the American League West, which will continue on through the end of the week in Anaheim. Monday's a day off, and then the next homestand begins Tuesday night with the defending world champion Giants here at Minute Maid Park. Ground ball in the hole and on through in the left field. Beltre to third. On the single by Blanks, and it's first and third, nobody out for the Rangers. Fortunately for the Astros, the only option for Adrian Beltre as the base runner at second base was to take a step or maybe even two back toward the bag at second. Watch Beltre leading off. Ground ball in front, you've got to go back. And then when it's all said and done, the best you can do is move up to third. Brent Strom is coming out. Rudnand Odor has been announced as the pinch hitter for Adam Rosales. Odor, a little second baseman with a 148 batting average, has a homer, nine runs batted in. He's one for one pinch hitting. Well, an obvious big moment in the game, and Brent Strom has that message that he wants out at the mound. This is not double play time. This is find a way to to get the type of out that doesn't yield a run strikeout pop up. 
something. We'll see how the infield is played, but I'm going to guess it's going to be some version of in. Now, what really can be a tail buster for the Rangers is if you get the ground ball to that drawn in infield that freezes the runner at third and the Astros find a way to turn two on it, then you really have something. Odor's ready to hit. If the infielder's in close. That was a back strike one. He had the walk off single in the 10th inning Saturday against Oakland. There's been a scoring change giving Delano to Shields a stolen base in the eighth inning. It had been initially ruled a wild pitch and then he scored the tying run. Broken bat pop up. Out of reach of Chris Carter. 0 and 2 to Odor. Came up last year and hit 259 with nine homers, 48 runs batted in. After the injury to Jerickson Profar, who's hurt again this year. Broken bat will cause a little delay while Odor gets another one. Get that slider into the kitchen. And that bat has has done its season's work. Odor is second on the Ranger club with his nine runs batted in. Now battling for contact with an 0-2 count and Chirinos on deck. He struck him out. One step, out. step by step and step one is a very big one getting that first out. Now with Chirinos the catcher coming to the plate you can play for the double play. Get yourself out of this frame again balls turns to that slider. It's those fingers right on the outside of the baseball. Turns it around like a spiral in football. The Astros will back up a little bit with the middle infielders. And play for two with Marlon Gonzalez and Jose Altuve. Robinson Chirinos the batter Chirinos 0 for 1 in his career against Qualls. Off the end of the bat it goes out toward right center and Beltre will tag. Here's Marisnik with the catch and the throw to the plate. Beltre coming in the throw to Conger goes by him and the Rangers take the lead 2 to 1. Beltre scoring on the sack fly by Chirinos and Blanks moving up to second base. Not the best of plays ultimately from Jacob Rizek. I understand the do or die factor right here, which can lead you to throw to the plate and not worry about a cutoff man, because this is the go ahead run in the ninth inning. But you still want to keep this throw down because look what happens in the process. That trail runner heads into scoring position. That's where Blanks is now for the Shields. Chirinos gets his eighth run batted in, and the Rangers lead it two to one. The Shields came off the bench. He doubled to right field in the sixth. Walk stole a base and scored in the eighth. Looks at strike one here. A Beltre double, a blank single. Then after a strikeout, Chirinos gives the Rangers their first lead. They've out hit the Astros seven to four. Houston will have Springer, Gaddis, and Carter do up in the last of the ninth. In the dirt, and it's one one. With Feliz warming up. The Astros 10 game winning streak on the line here. Falling behind in the ninth. They have not lost a game in which they've led at some point. And they led with a first inning run until the game was tied in the eighth. Two balls and a strike. The Astros 11 and 0 when they lead after seven innings. The 
Shield swings and it's two and two. The Rangers took the Shields from the Astros in the Rule 5 draft over the winter. They picked up a speedy outfielder, and speed is something they were lacking on their club. Converted second baseman. He looks at strike three. And the Rangers grab the lead with a ninth inning run on two hits. A man left. The Astros come up in the bottom of the ninth. Their 10 game win streak on the line. Springer, Gaddis, and Carter do to bat. Sports is presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. It's now 2 to 1. The Rangers threatening to end the Astros 10 game winning streak. Rangers have made some changes. They have a new right fielder, Carlos Pagaro. As the Astros come up in the bottom of the ninth inning, there's Pagaro in right, taking over there for Chu. And there is Odor at second base. And on the mound, their closer, Niftali Feliz. Pagaro was working on that Eddie Van Halen guitar move out there. <laughs> at least one and one, two saves in four opportunities. George Springer 0 for 2 with a walk. And it's strike one. Feliz, 27 years old from the Dominican Republic. Signed with Atlanta initially, and Texas got him in a trade in the middle of the 07 season, involving many players, including Mark Teixeira. Two. Tonight's T-Mobile game changer, George Springer, at least for the time being. Jake Smolenski, the nine hitter at the plate, hits this fly ball down the right field side, a runner aboard, and what a play by George Springer. Ball in foul territory, still the alertness to get the ball back to the infield. I'll tell you what, he's some kind of talent. Believes off the plate as a one-two pitch coming next. Feliz pitched a scoreless ninth Saturday against Oakland. A couple of close pitches on George. That slider. Very tough location. All you can do is lay off and then hope the umpire lays off. Struck him out. One out in the home ninth. Strikeout number eight for Ranger pitching tonight. And it's Evan Gaddis who has delivered the Houston run with a first inning sack fly. He has a double. He's one for two. 
Last Friday against Oakland, Feliz got his second blown save. He allowed a, a go ahead two run double by Brad Laurie. And Colby Rasmus hit a two run homer off him at Texas April 10th. Good boy. In the dirt for ball one to Gaddis with Chris Carter on deck. Feliz has had three outings against the Astros. Two of them scoreless. The way they've been playing, they expect to do something magical here in the home ninth inning with a 10 game winning streak. Rolled out to second base for Odor. Two outs. And now Carter. Chris is 0 for 3 tonight with two strikeouts. Rasmus comes out to the on deck circle. Marlon Gonzalez would be next. Carter hit a homer last year off Niftali Feliz. Outfielders extremely deep. And two for three lifetime against Feliz. Strike one. Now the Rangers are in that no doubles defensive positioning. And they've got Adrian Beltre near the line on the third base side. They're playing that intelligent side that says we do not want above anything else to give up the double right here. 1-1 one, one to Carter. The Astros have been held to four hits tonight. Ross Deadweiler gave up those four hits in one run in his seven innings. Kella is in line for his second win of the year. That one spins up high, and it's two and one to Carter. Chirinos out for a word with his pitcher. Will Harris getting loose for Houston. The Astros have five wins this season in their final at bat. Two and two to Carter. Chris has got to be thinking find one pitch to unload on. At strike three and the Rangers have snapped the Astros 10 game winning streak. Feliz comes in for a one two three ninth including two punch outs. The Rangers go to nine and 16 while the Astros are now 18 and 8. Texas claims the opener of this three game series in a tight one two to one.